The very first video I've uploaded to the internet was about how to hack your normal laser pointer into a burning laser pointer. It was a style inspired by the days of early YouTube with Kip K, potato cannons, and fake battery life hacks. I still try to make videos like this, but I end up making videos that are not like this. I've created a polar opposite of educational content, and I kind of feel like I have to make up for it. I want to make content that more reflects my perspective on the world, and my ongoing search of inner peace. So you know what? I'm gonna drop the diode! This is going to be that series where I'm going to do electronics projects, experiments, some embedded programming, whatever it may be. I got lots of technical stuff I can talk about, and I think that is worth doing. I don't have anything new right now, but I do have this pile of old footage, so here's some interesting stuff I dug up. Enough, I got bubbles there. Oh, forming up little bubbles. Can I take a splint? Can I burn you? <coughs> oh. ah! <coughs> oh, get out. Oh. Uh, so, let's blow this up. Ah. Uh. <laughs> four screws on top of the power supply, and you just have to hit it really hard to take all these screws off. Okay, so once that's done, I'm going to. Move. Oh. So it's just popping. It's actually some pretty cool popping right there. 
That is nice popping. Oh, you know what? Here's something fun. So, got a wire wrapped around that. White one instead. This is a handheld capacitor charger. Now, as you see, I can charge this capacitor and just a high voltage here. Watch if I touch it. I, I, I get shocked. You see, there's a meter. And by measuring this, you get. Yeah, it's, it's, it's negative. Around 200. And if I measure the capacitor, so, yes. I also get around 200 as well. And, uh, I think I've just created a spark. Take, 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 take a look at this. Boom, you see that? So, here we have a floppy disk. Floppy disks, boards, two of them. Two floppy disk boards. But all we we're going to be using is one of them. Right here is a Slayer Exciter. A Slayer Exciter is a coil designed to summon demons. Now you see, when I turn the coil on, nothing really happens. And then you can see here on my meter, when I put it to measure some voltage, or should I say demons, make sure the probe is working. When this thing gets close to the mark, Demon Summoner. You get some various readings. Lots of crazy readings from this contraption. Now when I take my finger and I put it up to it, I touch it with my finger. It will burn my finger and it would create smoke. Ow. Ow. Oh. Ow. Oh no, ow, ow. There's a clear sign that there was a demonic presence in this coil. And if you take a compact fluorescent bulb, you can see that it's the demon powered compact fluorescent bulbs are going to turn on. Other bulb here likes to cooperate with the demons as well. It lights up very brightly as the fires of hell would just shine right through it. As you see. But this one, this one just doesn't work. Ooh, ooh. Ooh. The meter is going crazy. It's very, very strong demonic presence.
No. This is negative. Put him backwards. Well, green is was supposed to be the earth, you know. Green is ground, you know, grass. And yellow is the uh, electricity, the dangerous stuff, you know. I mean, all it's gonna assume that electricity, uh, this flow of positive charge, because whoops. Now, if I stick this in here, which turns it on, completes the circuit, it will start generating a high voltage and will start charging this capacitor up to around 200 or so. I'm making a mess with this a little more to optimize it. You see, this is the diode. This is a diode apparently. It's and this transformer steps up the voltage. This thing takes in DC power from the, uh, the battery and uh, oscillates, creating a high voltage output at the secondary winding. How? Okay, I don't have anything in my eyes. Yeah, good enough. I have something over my face. It's gonna be a tiny explosion anyways. Tiny, tiny explosion. Oh. See? Tiny, tiny. And that's pretty much it. So this on the top is a piece of metal with legs, that's really all it is, and this is a candle. And this the piece of metal on the top is just the right size for an IC. Take a look, the legs line up, yeah close enough, roughly line up, if the solder was melted it would fit snugly on top of that, but all I have to do is uh, light the candle, you know. A terrible method. Uh, I'll light the candle. Put the candle on top of it. And take your board. It's a thing you want to remove. And plop it on top of it. You can also add some solder to the corners here and clean them off so there's good heat transfer. It's pretty much a soldering iron on its own. So uh, yeah, there's some solder on top of this thing, and uh, all you have to do is position your board, the thing you want to remove, right, which is this 74 series thing, and you place it right on top. And then you just leave it in there for a while. Just wait for it to melt all the pins, you know. Crap. need a piece of metal. All you have to do is get a piece of metal and nudge that thing up. Crap, this isn't working. No screwdriver. Oh, here's a piece of metal. There we go. And as you see, the IC just pops right at the top. Easy, 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 easy.